Hi guys, uh, a very warm welcome. So today's uh, topic is uh, Azure Virtual Network Tutorial. Let's look into what's in it for you. So we would be covering why is Azure Virtual Network important? What is Azure Virtual Network is? Benefits of using the Azure Virtual Network. Components of Azure Virtual Network that includes the subnet, routing, network security group. Why these components are required to be created in the virtual network and how to launch an instance uh, within the Azure VNet or the virtual network. And then we will be seeing one demo in which we will create Azure virtual network subnets and network security groups. So first of all, let's look into why is Azure virtual network important. So why Azure virtual network is required. So somewhere far away at an office, a company was struggling with few challenges. The company got a bigger projects which lead to the following challenges that includes poor network connectivity, time consuming process in building network topologies, could not divert network traffic to its destination on time. So these were a couple of challenges the company was facing. So the employees thought that what could be the possible solution to these challenges. And then we require the Azure virtual network in that case. So first of all, let's understand what is Azure virtual network is. An Azure VNet or a virtual network represents your network or environment to run VMS and applications in the cloud. When it is created, the services and virtual machines within the network interact securely with each over the internet. So virtual network, you can consider it as a virtual cloud, which is basically kind of a cloud space virtually assigned to the users or, the, or to the organization which they can dedicatedly use for their purpose. So for example, if you have to create some uh, instances or virtual machines onto the Azure cloud and you want to connect it with the on-prem servers, for example, uh, then you might require the virtual network in that case. Let's assume that those instances that are created in the virtual network require the range of IP addresses that you want to allocate to them and that is something you can customize using the Azure Virtual Network. How do you want that the traffic should be routed to your instances in the virtual network? How the firewall securities should be applied? Everything the end user can control in the virtual network. So it seems like that you are working in your own data center. Ideally, you would be working on to the Azure cloud using the virtual network. Now, what are the advantages of using the Azure Virtual Network? So a couple of them are, it provides an isolated environment for your application. So as I said that it feels like, it seems like that you are working in your on-prem environment. That means within your data center. But ideally it is a virtual space that is allocated to you, which is a kind of an isolated environment and that is specifically designed uh, for your task and the activities. Uh, generally a subnet in a VNet can access the public internet by default. So we create a subnet inside the virtual network which can access the public internet. So there is a public network connectivity that is enabled in the virtual net so that a subnet which will be created in the VNet can be accessed. Traffic can be easily filtered from different resources. So you can have some uh, control lists defined, you can have some security groups created and how do you want to allow the traffic onto the servers or the application that is something which you can control. It is a highly secure network and the security groups and the policies are basically implemented by the end user. So you can design how the security should be implemented. High network connectivity, so you have a higher bandwidth as compared to the normal internet connection you might be having in the data center. Compared to that, you use the Azure network only, which gives you the higher network connectivity. It builds sophisticated network topologies in a simple manner and which is easily manageable as well as uh, there are less troubleshooting issues that we would encounter. Now, what are the components of Azure virtual network? One of them is the subnets. Then you have routing. Then you have network security groups. Now, what do we mean by subnets? The subnet is one of the major or a prime important component in the virtual network. So what you have to do is first, obviously you would be creating a virtual network. Inside that you can create the subnets. Subnets, you can consider it a logical partitioning or virtual partitioning inside the 
virtual network. Subnet lets user segment the virtual network into one or more subnetworks. For example, let's assume that you're working in an organization and in the organization there are different departments. For every department, there should be some set of IP addresses that you want to allocate to the machines that the employees are using. Or all the departments should be isolated. That means that they should have their own network IDs and the network addresses allocated to their machines. And in that case, what you would do is you would create the subnets and the subnet IDs that would be allocated to those departments. These subnetworks can be separated logically and each subnet consists of a server. So what you do is when you create a subnet, you can uh, you can create a server or an instance inside that subnet. And how do you want to give an access to that instance depends on criteria or the requirement. Hence, a subnet can further be divided into two parts, one as the public subnet and the other one as the private subnet. These are the naming conventions of the subnet. Then how do you want to give the internet connectivity depends on how the public subnet should be interacting with the internet and for the private subnet as the name suggests that the internet is blocked so that means it is completely isolated in the virtual network the private instances though if you want that any instance created in the private subnet should have the internet connectivity or an access you can primarily go with the NAT gateways in that case which is a network address translation or a kind of a translator which converts the private to public and vice versa and that would actually enable the internet connectivity to your subnets. Then in the public instances, they can directly access the instance as the name suggests public instances that public subnets. That means they have the direct internet connectivity. Next component is routing and uh, the routing is primarily a routing rules. You can say that are applied and those are actually applied to the routers only. So since on the cloud, we cannot have a direct router access and hence using the routing as a component, we can define some routing rules which are directly applied to the router in the infrastructure. It delivers the data by choosing a suitable path from source to destination. For each subnet, Azure Virtual Network automatically routes traffic and creates a route table. When you create a virtual network, automatically a route table is created and that basically is required to route the traffic and that can be used by every subnet. That doesn't mean that you only have to create a single route table in the virtual network. You can have multiple route tables also created, which can be associated with different subnets as well. Then you have the network security groups. Uh, it is kind of a firewall that protects the virtual machine by limiting the network traffic. It restricts inbound and outbound network traffic depending upon the destination IP address port and the protocol. So it is basically uh, the network security group sits on the instances and uh, or virtual machines and they basically define that how the traffic should be reaching to the ports onto the virtual machine. So how do you want to open up the ports and for which IP addresses you want to open up the ports? That is something the end user or the administrator has to specify or a design. So they act as a kind of a firewall rules only that protects the virtual machines. So how to launch an instance using Azure VNet? So first of all, uh, you have to create a virtual network. So virtual network act as a container for subnets. So first thing is that you would be creating a virtual network. Then you would be creating subnets which are considered as a subset within the virtual network. So cloud instances included in the subnet. So first VNets are created, then the subnets are created, and then you configure the properties in the security group. Have a look at this in detail. Now with respect to the virtual network, what you need to do is you have to create a virtual network in the Azure cloud. Then you have to create subnets into each virtual network, which is kind of a subset of a virtual network. So you can create one as a public subnet, the other one as a private subnet, for example. Now you have to assign instances. So when you create an instance, you have to specify that what is the virtual network for which virtual network you're creating an instance within that virtual network. You have to select that on which particular subnet the instance should be created. 
and then connect instance to a relevant network security group. So attach your network security group to the instances and based on the properties or the rules that are defined in the network security group that will be applied to the instances within the subnets. Finally, configure the properties in the network security and set the policies. As a result, you will be able to launch your instance on Azure within the virtual network. Now we will be seeing one demo that how we can create Azure Virtual Network subnets and the network security group. So just be there uh, to watch uh, our demo on the Azure Virtual Network. In today's uh, session, I would be showing how you can create the virtual networks uh, onto the Azure. And for that, you require the credentials on Microsoft Azure. And here you can see on my screen that I have already logged in into the Azure console. Now what you need to do is, uh, in order to search virtual network, you can type and search in the dashboard, uh, in the search bar, uh, with respect to the virtual networks. And here you can find uh, the virtual network and the gateways. So what you need to do is, you just have to click on the virtual networks and then it will give you the options to add the components inside the virtual networks. So let me first uh, open up uh, the virtual network. Right. Now, in theory, we discussed that the virtual network comprises of multiple components and subcomponents. So primarily is that first you have to create a virtual network. Then you have to assign the IPv4 CIDR block to the virtual network. And then you create the subnets inside the network, which is a subset of the virtual network. Along with that, you define the routing rules. And uh, likewise, you create the instances inside the subnets that will be part of the virtual networks. So that's what we are going to do uh, in this demo. So I would be adding up a new virtual network. So you can see here, there are already two virtual networks that have been added. One is the demo VNet, which is by default. So when you created the Azure credentials, the demo virtual network was already created by the Azure so that it can provide you the default settings and then the test one has been created by me and uh, that's the customized one or you can say a non-default virtual network so i'll i'm going to add another vnet and uh, would define the name to it so let's wait for the details to appear so here you have to define the virtual network to create uh, obviously we will be going with the free trial only and then you have to create a resource group. So what is a resource group? It is primarily a collection of resources that share the same lifecycle permissions and the policies. So if you have a resource group uh, created, you can use it, otherwise you can create a new resource group. So I already have one, that is the demo one. I would be using that. In the instance details, you have to specify the name of uh, the virtual network. So these are certain uh, parameters that you have to go with uh, while defining the name. So let's say I put something like test VNet as uh, the virtual network that I want to create and that is you have to select a region where you want to get that uh, created. So these are the available regions that you can select. I would go with uh, US East, uh, East US only and then we have to define the IP addresses also. So in the IP addresses, uh, the CIDR blocks are allocated to the virtual networks and that becomes a fixed IP address uh, for that VNet. So what you can do is you can specify a range of IP addresses. Now, whenever we talk about a virtual network and the IP addresses, we primarily focus on the private IPs only. So this is uh, the private IP that we are actually uh, talking about. So I can reserve some IP address CIDR for our VNet and that is the range of 40.0.0.0 slash 16. I'm going to reserve. So now we'll create one subnet and uh, we'll name that subnet. So as we discussed that subnets are the subcomponents of uh, the VNet. So here you can see we have already created one uh, subnet with the name public subnet. So likewise we can add another subnet also and uh, let's name it to something like uh, demo subnet. Right, and the subnet should have the IP address range and that IP address range should be part of the VNet only. In V18, uh, so same subnet address range you would be defining in the subnet as well. So that will be 40.0.1. Or we can select 2.0 slash 24. 
The rest of the things uh, would be default. Uh, we are not attaching any route table as of now. So just click on OK. And here you can see that the subnet is created. Now once the subnet is created, now we are going to create a virtual machine inside that subnet. And for that, we'll go to the search bar. And here we'll type virtual machines. Now we'll create a virtual machine in the same VNet, that is the test VNet and inside the demo subnet so that our virtual machine gets the private IP address from uh, the subnet that has been created in the VNet itself. So what you need to do is you have to open up the virtual machines, click on add and here you should add a new virtual machine. So you should uh, select the name of the virtual machine and uh, the network details where we would be defining the VNet as well as the subnet where the virtual machine should be created. So in the subscription, we'll go with the free tail and in the resource group, we'll go with the demo that has already been created. We'll put a virtual machine name, uh, something like uh, test uh, VM and the rest of the things will be default. So we'll quickly skip the disk check also. Now in the networking, we would be selecting the test VNet as our virtual network. And in the subnet, we would be selecting the demo subnet. So that is the recently one added in the test VNet and we want that our virtual machine should be part of that subnet only. Now, obviously, since we are creating a virtual machine, so it should be part of, it should have the public IP also assigned since uh, from the public network, we need to access those virtual machines. So we'll keep it enabled. Right. And the next uh, would be the default settings that we are going to proceed with. So let's uh, review all the configurations and then create your virtual machine. So here you can see that our virtual machine has been created. Validation has been passed and it takes a couple of minutes to get that updated. So let's wait for a few more minutes so that our virtual machine is ready. And primarily what we want to look into is that our virtual machine is created in a correct VNet and it gets uh, the private IP address from the subnet that has been part of the uh, VNet, uh, which has been defined in the creation of a virtual machine. So let's wait for a couple of more minutes and uh, we'll look into the status of the VNet. Now you can see here our test virtual machine has been created. Now what we wanted to look into is that our virtual machine is created in a correct subnet or not. And that is something which we can validate by checking the private IP address. So it got the private IP from the range of uh, the IP address that we have specified in the subnet. Now in order to access uh, this particular virtual machine, you have to use the public IP since uh, since uh, we have to access it from the internet. So from the private IP, this virtual machine will not be accessible. So that's the reason that when we created a virtual machine, we allocated the public IP address also for this instance. So that is uh, with respect to uh, the virtual network and the demonstration on it and how we can create a VNet and the subcomponents of the VNet, how they are associated or interlinked with each other. And that actually creates a kind of an isolated environment on the public cloud, which gives you the understanding that you can work into uh, just like an on-prem environment only. So thanks for watching our video, guys. Uh, watch out for more space with respect to the upcoming videos. Till then, bye for now. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.